You know, this is one of our most transformational DIY home improvement projects we've ever done. And of course, we're going to share it with you in this video so that you can DIY too. This DIY journey started with our builder grade small bathroom renovation. Over several days, we started seeing water on the floor. And at first, we thought it was coming from the toilet. So we called a leak doctor to try to find out where the water was coming from. We had no idea the series of events that was about to happen next. We didn't realize that the bottom of our vanity was completely destroyed. We discovered that water was slowly coming up through the ground and was damaging our wood floors. Once the water was shut off to the bathroom, a humidifier and fans were brought in to begin the drying process. These fans had to stay on all night long. It was so disruptive, but it was important to prevent the buildup of mold. With all of this stuff going on, we were very thankful that it was yes. a supply leak and not a sewage leak. Or else it would have gotten really stinky. We felt like our house was a construction site. That's how noisy it was. They kept digging and searching for the hidden leak under our concrete slab. After all of that work, this little crack was the cause of our extensive water damage. Once the water line was repaired, the dirt refilled, and the concrete dried, it was time to clear out the bathroom. Under normal circumstances, you can follow these steps to remove a bathroom vanity. This was the original vanity to the house and we had to remove the front panels in order to get it through the door. We always appreciate our little helpers. We used a coping saw to remove part of the vanity that somehow was built behind the shut-up valves. So one thing we learned um, as a homeowner about our water, since we had a water leak, is that this little valve here underneath the kids' bathroom sink actually controls the water outside the, the side what is it, a spigot on the side of our house. So when we were testing the water, that wasn't coming back on and we didn't know why. And then someone from the county water department, thank you, showed us that this is what controls that. So that's a new learning for us. We're sharing it with you. These are our hot and cold to go into our vanity and this goes to outside. We cleaned, patched, and sanded the drywall. Then we used a mold killing primer. In preparing for our new vanity, we used Valspar cabinet enamel in the color of Bay Waves to add a fresh new look to our small bathroom. Since this was our very first vanity install, we learned that we had to take several measurements to ensure a good fit. We went to our local home improvement stores to see if we could find a pre-made vanity that would fit under our mirror and within the dimensions of our older home. Here are some of the vanities we considered. The location of our water valves made it difficult to find a pre-made vanity that would fit. We learned there were so many vanity styles to consider. 
We really like this vanity and were willing to cut the back of the bottom drawer to make the valves fit, but we were disappointed to see the scratch on the sink when we brought it home. It is so hard to rebox return a vanity. We were so happy when we found this unexpected deal at another store. Yeah, we talked on the phone and measured it to make sure this vanity was right. This vanity set also came with a mirror that we used in another room. We really like the color gray, which happens to be one of the popular vanity colors. We were working together to get this thing done, so we took another DIY picture. We used a keyhole handsaw and a Dremel to cut a space out for our valves. Our extra outside water valve made the cut a little tricky, but we were able to make it work. The sliding drawers behind the cabinet door is my favorite part of this vanity. We use silicone to waterproof and seal the sink to the vanity. When I saw the look of the peel and stick tiles compared to the ceramic tiles, I convinced you that we needed to try it. <laughs> At first I was a little hesitant because we've never done this before, but we went ahead and got three boxes and got to work. Got to work. <laughs> One of the first things we had to do is lay out all the tiles to make sure we had enough and to also make sure where we were gonna start the tiles and end it had some symmetry so we didn't have like these small cuts. Most people would tile up to their baseboard, but since we were replacing all of our baseboards, I used the line to mark where the tile will go to the wall. You can see here, I'm trying to cut the tile while it's in place, but it was pretty hard. So I took it to another area and it was I was able to cut it very easily. Yeah, the nice thing about these tiles is that they're a little bit thinner than the peel and stick tiles we've used before. And making the cuts 
um, are a little uh, easier. Yeah, a lot simpler. <laughs> so we lay down all of our tiles and tried to find where the most visible part of our bathroom would be, and that's where we laid the first tile. This project required a lot of spacers. Yes. So we used them to make sure that the sides in the, the tiles didn't stick. I mean, didn't. <laughs> we, made, we made sure that the tiles didn't shift. <laughs> but they still did. So that was the only drawback, I think, from using these hexagon tiles. Uh, the sticky wasn't as sticky as we thought, which I guess was good because we needed to move it around and shift it. But getting all of those grout lines straight with all of the spacers was was pretty difficult. It looks like you're really working on that one right there, too. You're trying <laughs> to make sure that that sucker doesn't move because I'm sure it moved several times on us. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to step on it. <laughs> I'm applying pressure so it would stick. I'm freehanding a semicircle on this tile so that I can place it under the flange. This tile is important because it affects so many of the other tiles in the pattern. I'm actually using pruning shears to cut this tile. We tried to use scissors before, but they didn't work as well, so we decided to use the shears. And what's nice is that these tiles do not need a wet saw. We can just use either shears or box cutters to make our shapes and cut our edges. For my hands, these pruning shears help me to cut smoother edges. We found it is best to cut the tile while the backing is still on it. Right, because then the adhesive won't get all on your shears or, you know, cutting device. The tiles around the flange will help to keep the toilet stable and it will help to create a nice seal. Here's where our concrete was a little uneven due to the repair. But having the small tiles, it was easy to kind of uh, cover up the unevenness, but we did have to use some extra adhesive on the back of the tile. Now in this area, we didn't tile all the way up to the wall because the vanity was going to go on top and we used the tiles kind of to level the floor. This is an example of a smaller corner cut before we put the baseboard in. We were finally done with sticking down all of the tiles. Yeah, you can see how we had room on both sides to put the baseboards in again. We loved how our floor was starting to look. It looked like real ceramic tile. This is the next step when we're using pre-mixed grout. And you have to be sure that you're using grout for vinyl tiles because there is pre-mixed grout for ceramic tiles, but you wanna make sure that the grout that you use is specifically designed for vinyl tiles. We cut the plastic bag on the bottom corner and put the grout inside. We apply grout directly on the grout line to minimize waste.
We noticed with the hexagon tiles versus square tiles, there was some, so much more grout that we had to wipe up. Yeah, because the additional grout lines required more patience when we had to grout. We changed our water bucket many times. I have to say this project was Wow, we learned a lot and it required a lot of patience. Yeah, I'm glad we were able to work together and transform our small bathroom again. Here's an up close look of the tiles after we grouted. For our project, we installed waterproof baseboards and quarter rounds and we used power grab instead of nailing them in. We use the waterproof caulk because we're working in the bathroom. I like to caulk the top and the bottom of the quarter round with my finger. This is our before. And this is our after with the Gratian Marble Hexagon Tiles. So here's our list of pros and cons we wanted to share for this project. We hope this helps if you decide to work with Hexagon Tiles. This DIY project took our dull beige fiberglass tub to bright and spa-like as part of our small bathroom makeover. So today we are going to repair our tub uh, with a little patch before we paint it. Yep, we're gonna use this uh, tub and shower repair kit. And then we're going to add a new, what's this called? It's a shower head. We're just gonna have a dual shower head for our children. Um, we have to do this before we paint. It's suggested that you do the hardware first and then tape it up because you'll need so much time for the tub to cure and you don't wanna accidentally drop something on it or scrape it or anything, so. And the reason she's saying that is because we're actually going to repaint uh, the fiberglass. So you'll see that. Make sure you stay to the end to see the pros and cons of using marine paint. Okay, so this part is going to be sped up. We have already cleaned the tub and installed our new fixtures. We also tied bags around the fixtures and taped them off to prevent water from leaking. This was our first time using this repair kit and it was pretty easy to use. A previous pipe repair from a blowtorch behind the wall damaged our fiberglass tub. We found that out when a master plumber came to repair our pipes during our bathroom renovation. Our damage was pretty large and we were using the repair putty almost like plaster. Sanding by hand was not working. So we used our electric mouse sander to very carefully smooth out the cured putty. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we scraped and sanded off residue from soap scum, paint, caulk, and any other buildup on the surround surface. It's always a good idea to wear personal protective equipment when sanding fiberglass. Prepping the surface is extremely critical for good adhesion. Without sanding, the primer and paint won't stick to the fiberglass. I was really surprised at how long it took for this important step of the refinishing process. Because we were doing a total bathroom renovation at the same time, we used a cordless vacuum to clean the initial drywall and fiberglass dust particles. It was almost like you were detailing a car. You can find links for this DIY in the description below. Then we had to clean the tub two more times with a heavy duty TSP cleaner to thoroughly remove any oils and remaining residue. Cleaning the entire tub and shower surround gave us a sense of its design features and how much area we would need to prime. We also noticed several spots where the fiberglass chipped, as well as discoloration that happened over the years. Our tub was definitely overdue for a makeover. Yes, we wanted it to look like the new shiny fiberglass tub that inspired us at our local home improvement store. Okay, so this is what we were gonna use, this tub sink and tile refinishing kit, and it had great reviews, but our tub is a whole fiberglass tub surround. It's not just a ceramic or porcelain tub on the bottom with the tile on the top. So that's why we're gonna try the marine boat paint. So we found the marine paint that I was talking about. It tells you about what you can do. So we don't have a boat, but we have a bathtub that's fiberglass. Look, they have it in different colors, red, green, white, Oh, that's the primer. Now the real DIY begins. We picked up a respirator to protect us from the very strong fumes. One thing we noticed was that the primer was very thick and hard to stir. Yeah, I could feel the thick texture. I had to keep stirring it until it had a smooth consistency and the color turned from beige to white. I wanted to practice using the foam roller with this product, so I tested out a small section in the corner to see how the primer would adhere to the fiberglass. It was smooth and easy to apply. Once we got the hang of it, we started from the top right of the shower and worked towards our left. Then we moved down to the inside of the tub and worked towards the outside of the tub. The fumes were so strong, we stopped recording so that we could quickly finish the primer coat. We then touched up a few spots using one of our favorite little brushes. We allowed the primer coat to cure for at least two days. Now it was time for the top coat. One thing we liked about these two products was that we only needed to give it a good stir. There was no mixing with an activator or anything like that, so we could easily seal up the can and save it for later. The first thing we noticed was the lighter consistency of this top coat paint. At 
first we created a lot of streaks, so we had to remember to keep the roller wet with paint. Tiny bubbles were created when we applied it with the foam roller. But the bubbles disappeared as it dried, and we could see how the paint and primer were reacting together. We rolled on the top coat with smooth vertical strokes. We used a brush for the curves and flat edges of the tub. After we let the top coat cure for at least five days, we were excited to see its shiny and reflective finish on our fiberglass tub. I loved how this product covered up our repair areas and gave it a fresh new look for our small bathroom makeover. We double checked that the top coat was completely cured before adding the waterproof molding. Our journey to refinish our bathtub and shower fiberglass around was definitely worth it. We feel like we have a new spa This DIY made our bathtub better than before. Here are some pros and cons to using marine paint. In this video, we're gonna show you all the things we learned during our faucet and sink installation of our bathroom vanity. Here's our old faucet with a beige ceramic sink that was updated to our new faucet with a white cultured marble sink. Our new sink and faucet installation was part of our bathroom makeover due to an underground water leak. You can check out our vanity and floor DIY video links in the description below. We had to make sure our faucet water supply valves were turned off. The new vanity sink wasn't as heavy. The other difference is that it had a different hole configuration for the faucet. Here are some common sink hole configurations. And after measuring, we learned that ours is the eight inch widespread. Since we were unable to use our old faucet, we searched for a new faucet that we both liked. Since we were unhappy with our old stopper, it was nice to see a new design. Yeah, we decided to see how the push and seal drain would work for us. Here's a preview of all the parts that came in the box.
Since our new sink was not attached to the vanity yet, it was much easier to install the faucet with the sink off. I was careful on how I used the tightening tool because I didn't want to over tighten the valves. This part was pretty easy to attach, but since I'm not a professional, let me know in the comment section if you know the purpose of the Y connector. We only needed an adjustable wrench after we hand tightened the water valve. We were very surprised to see the gap between the tailpiece and the sink trap. We're pretty lucky that we live close to home improvement stores. It makes it easier when we have to go back and forth during our DIY projects. Babe, where are we at? We're at Home Depot again. How many times do we go? We've been here several times. <laughs> <laughs> After we purchased the new Y connector, we installed it and there were no more leaks.
After everything was working correctly, I disconnected the flex pipe to lift up the sink. Clear silicone allowed us to quickly set our sink before it hardened. We had to make sure we wiped the excess so that it didn't permanently remain in place. Hey guys, despite the hiccups that occur in DIY projects, just remember anything can be fixed. This plumbing project was challenging, but we are pleased with the results. In this video, we're going to share our mistakes so that you won't go wrong when installing your peel and stick backsplash. So what happened was, this DIY was inspired by the success of the peel and stick tiles we used for the accent wall in our master bathroom. Yeah, we really like the finished look. There are a few tiles that we had left over and they came in handy when we replaced our old vanity that had a side and backsplash. We found our new vanity on sale at Lowe's and it had no backsplash. So when we measured, we knew the vanity was higher and the gap was smaller under the mirror. So we weren't planning to order a separate backsplash at the time. Now this is our first mistake because we should have installed the peel and stick before we installed the vanity. And you guys can see why this was a missed opportunity later in the video. You know how you can get so focused that you can forget an important detail? Well, we were so focused on the vanity being level and getting all the new plumbing to work that once it was in, we noticed a gap on the back and right side. At this point, we were like, hey, let's use our extra peel and stick tiles. We thought this would be the perfect idea since their dark gray color could contrast the white sink and not look too busy under the tiled mirror frame. It was only a small space that we needed to fill, so we started taking our measurements for both the back and side. Our other idea was that the backsplash tiles would meet right behind the faucet so it would hide the seam. So we cut the tiles to fit and we thought it would be fairly easy just to slide the tiles in. And it did seem like it was working on the sides, but when we tried to slide those tiles behind the vanity, yeah, we had another situation. The tiles were actually too thick to slide back there. We came to the realization that we needed more room. And this leads us to our second mistake. We should have taken the blow and unhooked the plumbing so we could pull out the vanity to give us more space. But instead, we moved it just a little and kept struggling to get the tile behind it. Oh my goodness, guys. This process was so time consuming and to make it worse, it was causing the tiles on the mirror frame to fall off. So at this point, we needed to take a little break. But we came back in and moved the vanity just a tiny bit more and finally we were able to slide the tile behind the vanity. We took the measurement for the cuts and we thought we were ready to peel and stick. Hey guys, this is where we made our third mistake. By this time we were tired. We ended up using the construction glue for both the mosaic tiles and the peel and stick tiles. Let me tell you guys that the all purpose glue definitely doesn't work with peel and stick on a wall. I mean, they ended up falling down within a few hours. We should have just used the moisture control adhesive that we know works. That is so right. It would have saved us so much time if we just added the same final adhesive we've been using in all of our peel and stick on the wall projects. We ended up scrapping the side and just going with the backsplash. The next thing we did was use a silicone sealant to caulk the sink to the vanity And then we created a waterproof seal with the peel and stick. We may have made a lot of mistakes in this project as beginner DIYers, but we still love the results. And you know, peel and stick is fascinating to us. And we hope you have a much easier time creating your peel and stick backsplash. If you learned something today, go ahead and click that like button. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. In this video, we'll share our tips and show you how to install a toilet paper holder. Toilet paper holders can range from freestanding to tank mounted. 
Before, our small bathroom did not have the right space for a wall mount and we did not like the spring holder mechanism. We liked the containment of the double post, but also the simplicity of the single post design. It just doesn't keep the toilet paper on with kids. During our bathroom renovation, we installed a new vanity and decided to mount the toilet paper on the side again. We found the perfect toilet paper holder for our family, one with a pivoting post. Stay till the end to see how kid friendly it really is. So the Samoan and Veil style has other bath hardware to match with it. We also needed a drill and tape for our installation. Okay, here we go mounting our new toilet paper holder to the side of our vanity. We're going to show you the complete installation process in four easy steps. One thing we like to do is to check out the contents of the product before we begin. The package included a plastic toggle and anchors for installing into drywall, but we didn't need to use that for our installation. We only needed screws to mount on the side of this vanity. There's a link in the description for this toilet paper holder. This was the first time we experienced directions with a toilet paper holder template. So the very first step is to use the template to mark where you would like to mount the holder. You use the leveler to make sure your holes will be even. Here's a close up of the directions. It also includes a towel bar template, so be sure to use the one for the holder. We had to remove the mounting plates that were screwed into the posts. The Allen wrench helped us to remove the set screws that were keeping the plates in place. The mounting plates have different shaped holes to help identify their up position like it is shown on the template. Be careful when removing the set screws, they're pretty small. We discovered the pivoting post is installed on the left side because the set screws should be underneath to give the appearance of a floating holder. We were about to drill the holes, but something told us to double check our mounting position. It was a good idea for us to check the level of our holder to make sure it had easy access for the ones who will be using it. We could not see the pencil marks against the gray vanity, so we just drilled through the template. We ended up lowering the mounts just a little. We did not use anchors because we drilled the nails directly into the top wood frame of the vanity instead of just the particle board. Our vanity had a border and we wanted to check the fit of the right post. We drilled in the top screws of each mount first before drilling in the bottom ones. We took our time with this installation because we didn't want to mess up our new vanity. You can see the complete DIY vanity install by clicking above.
When doing home improvement DIY projects for the very first time, sometimes another set of hands and eyes are appreciated. We are at the final step of this toilet paper holder install. Now we use the Allen wrench to tighten back the set screws to secure the post on the mounting plate. As a general rule, toilet paper holders should be installed at at least 26 inches above the floor. Ours was installed around 30 inches. This time we turn the set screws before putting the post on the plate. Did you know for around $25, you can upgrade your toilet paper holder with a variety of options. We really like how the chrome popped against the gray. You can use the long end or switch to the shorter end to make it easier to tighten the set screws. It can be tricky using the Allen wrench underneath. All done. We were all finished installing the toilet paper holder and I wanted to see just how well it kept the toilet paper roll on the post. Nice. Now we had to check if our youngest could figure out how to change a roll of toilet paper with this new holder. This toilet paper holder was just what we needed. This DIY was a great addition to our small bathroom makeover. And if you'd like to see more videos like these, please, please subscribe, subscribe to our, our channel. channel. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell. DIY Power Couple YouTube channel is your source to help you unleash your inner DIY power.